Ever thought what it's like to immerse yourself in a sound bath? Well, I have you covered. Join me as I invite a special guest to dive into the unique experience of a sound bath and spill all the details on the after bath. Welcome to the After Bath, where we explore unique experiences and wellness practices. I'm your host, Matt. Today we have a special episode where we'll be diving into the world of sound baths. If you've ever wondered what it's like to be immersed in soothing sound waves, you're in for a treat. Episode 4 of the After Bath, our sound bath participant, Shell steps into uncharted territory with her fourth consecutive sound bath. After a tough week, Shell feels pretty drained. But this time she's poised to go beyond the familiar bliss. As her journey deepens, what life-altering insights will she uncover on the other side? Keep watching to discover the profound revelations that may just give your own wellness journey a whole new meaning. Shell, welcome back. So this is Thank your you, fourth sound bath. Coming up. Coming up. How you been this week? Rubbish. <laughs> It's getting it's been worse. a hard <laughs> week. <laughs> okay, cool. No, or maybe not. I should stop saying that. <laughs> okay, so tell me what's been, what's going on. Well, first of all, thank you for doing the interview in reverse because yep. it has been really difficult to speak. Yep. Post sound bath. Yep. It may not have looked like it or sounded like it, but mm-hmm. it was a struggle to bring myself to the surface again Mm -hmm. and hear the questions. And it was a very interesting phenomenon that as soon as the interviews were over, I could not remember a thing you'd asked me. Got it. Though you have told me that at some point I will be able to remain in that state, that beautiful, relaxed, blissful state, but function normally not there yet. Yeah. So... Really happy that we're doing the interview yeah. <laughs> now rather than after. Though I imagine we'll do a little bit of an interview afterwards yeah. as well. Yeah. So, okay. Remember we talked about going through a Venturi? I think it was yeah. episode two. We talked about committing to a process of six and that I was really curious to see where this would take me mm. as opposed to just to using one modality or one sound bath as a way of taking a bit of stress off, just being a bit relaxed. I've committed to a process and I was curious and I knew that there would be some uncomfortable bits. Mm. Well, I'm in the skinny bit of the venturi where I'm getting squished, squashed, pressured and it feels uncomfortable. So I'm in the uncomfortable spot. Yeah. Mm. So didn't have a good week. <laughs> Got it. But I'll tell you why. Yeah. So in committing to this process, I made an internal commitment to be candid. Mm-hmm. And it's hard. Mm. Yeah. It's hard to think about it and feel it myself. It's harder to tell somebody else. It's harder for uh, to think that other people are hearing it. But yeah, I... I made a commitment and it's good for me too. It's good Mm. for me. So Mm. quite a few things came up and I can't remember all of them, but I remember the major one, which probably popped up around about Tuesday. So the sound bath last week, I think was a Friday, but Tuesday. Yeah. How do I explain this? I did not know that this was happening, but somewhere deep in my body, I had held myself in a kind of freeze position. Mm -hmm. There is or definitely was a deep defensiveness. Mm -hmm. Imagine I'm wearing a poncho and I've got my fists up underneath. It looks like I'm all smooth on the outside, but underneath that poncho, I'm ready for a fight. Got it. Not in an aggressive way. Not in a mean way, not in an angry way, just a, if you 
have any ill intention here, I'm poised to fight. Mm. I'm No, it's not that. I'm poised to protect myself. Mm. And I didn't realise that that had some kind of physical manifestation. I didn't mm-hmm. even know I was doing it. And it felt bloody awful. Mm. Mm. So the way I can explain it in terms of an analogy, my cousin went through a horrific car accident when she was a teenager. She was skittled by a drugged drunk driver. Mm. She was out with friends. One of them died. Mm. She was hit as well. Mm -hmm broke more bones than you can count, Mm. lung punctured, ended up in hospital for a year. She has had massage and chiro treatment a couple of times where the practitioner has related back to her and she's related back to me that she's still held in that locked position Mm. from the trauma of the accident. Now, that's an extreme example. Mm. But there was something of that going on in me where there's, there was something in me just locked in that freeze position, hardened position, defensive position. It melted away. It melted away by Wednesday and I found myself... showing up in conversations differently to how I was before. And I don't know that it looked any different to anybody else. I probably all just thought I'm I'm being my normal friendly self, Mm. but it felt different to me. I'm just trying to think how I can express that. It's like, (laughs) it's like when you feel comfortable with people and you let your tummy out. Yep. Yep. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. So it felt like that. Yep. And it's a really, really good feeling. Some people would describe it as feeling comfortable in your own skin, Mm. but it went a lot deeper than that because it's not about feeling physically comfortable Mm. in your own skin. It's it was a feeling of not having my jukes up. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that was going on. But it was going on and it felt yucky and it dissipated. But what transpired in the next few days was something that we also came up in episode two, but in a different way, which is when you lose ground. Mm -hmm. So I lost ground. Mm. I lost, uh, how did you put it? You put it as you can get wobbly or you could... You could feel out of control. So however you described it, that happened and it's an uncomfortable position to be in because I'd moved through my life with this jukes up under the poncho thing Mm. for such a long time Mm -hmm. that I knew how to operate in that position. Mm. Mm -hmm. Even though I didn't know I was doing it. Yeah. At least I knew how to do it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So once that melted away Tuesday, Wednesday, I didn't know what my MO was anymore. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What's my MO? How do I, how do I get around this life now? Yeah. Because I kind of felt, felt like I didn't have defences anymore. Mm. I felt vulnerable but equally, and here's the weird thing, mm. vulnerable but equally safe. Yeah. Relieved. Yeah. Unpressured. Unburdened. Yes. Free. Yep. Liberated. Yep. Go figure. Yep. I was at a retreat at the beginning of the year. There was this beautiful lady, and I don't mean physically beautiful. She Mm. just had a beautiful presence about her. She Mm. was one of the organisers. Just to stand in her presence, you could ask her anything. There would always be a moment just a moment before she'd answer. Mm. If you want a quick answer, it gets frustrating. Yeah. Because especially if you're in business, if you have to do business, Mm. 
just spit it out already. Yeah. Technology also makes us very impatient for immediate answers. Yeah. For, so for someone to pause mm. for a split second is a frustrating... So she did that. She That, that was her MO. Mm. Yeah. But I learnt after a, f- a day, didn't take me long, that what was happening there with her is that she had such a deep inner peace, mm. such a deep safety within her mm. that she had poise. Not yep. pause or peace, mm. but poise. Mm. A deep inner poise. And with that there was no defen- there was no defensiveness in her. And she was a little thing. Yeah. And female and all the vulnerability that goes around being little and being female and mm. all those sorts of things. She was listening because she had that deep Mm. in a poise Mm. and that pause before she spoke. After a little while, I realised what was happening, that there was an exchange of, there was, it's like a translation thing. Mm. I don't know if you've ever seen your cats do this, but Mm -hmm. I swear my cats, Mm -hmm. my cat understands Mm -hmm. English, but it doesn't happen immediately, so I'll, I'll say something to my yep. cat and there's this – and it can be a direct instruction. Mm. For example, wait, I'm going to open the door for you in a minute. Yeah. Just stay over there. Yeah. I'll let you know. Yeah. And then I'll watch and the cat will go, I don't get what you said, but I'll get it in a second. Yeah. And then it gets it. Yep. And then it moves, but there's always a delay. Yeah. And it's I swear that there's some sort of translator going on up there. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yep. There's like a little transmission. So she was doing this. Mm. Yeah. And in that pause was what's up? I just want to put a poncho on. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Get your jukes up under yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> was that translation thing going on. Yeah. And it wasn't just of a, a request or a question that I had put to her. It was exchange of something else. She deeply understood my need, not just my question. Mm. That's it. And something in her calmness, Calmed me. Mm. Yep. So. I can shed a little bit of light on, because I've done that, and I do that. And which I, bit? The duke's up or the <laughs> calmness? The <No>, calmness. <laughs> Go. Okay, so I would realise, so if, if, if I was the little old lady, what was it? Sorry, she's not a little old lady. But she wasn't she, a no, little no, old lady. No, she was she's, little she's, and she was a lady. She was a little lady. Right, sorry. Relatively young, yeah, I'd yeah. say. She's probably in her 30s. Oh, okay. So, relatively young little lady. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got it now. And um, what I'm guessing what might have been happening is that usually when people would come to me with a question... there would be a part of me that would realise the absurdity of the question and how little good will probably come from even delivering the answer that they hope to get because it won't really matter much. But nonetheless, if I just pass it off as, oh, you're just being silly, that won't work. And it's disrespectful to where they're at. Yeah. Mm. So I would usually find, okay, I can't just give you, you know, the type of answer that is 
go away. Yeah, the, you're being silly, go away. So I'll, I'll usually wait and see what arises. And then usually if I wait, some little bit of wisdom will arise that usually I won't even be aware that it's from me. It's just like it's, oh yeah, a little bit of wisdom. And I probably won't think much of it other than, and there's been times when I've told people things that I've thought about later on and gone, why do I say that? It almost seemed rude. Oh well. <laughs> and usually they hit the spot. So it's like there's a part of you going, all right, this is a silly question, but I've got to give you an answer that you can digest at the moment that is going to put you in the best direction rather than in the direction that you want to go at this moment. So, but you, you, I found that you need to do a little pause <laughs> because the information doesn't come straight away. It's almost a bit like this, and this might seem really weird. You already know the answer, but I need to have it transmitted on some other level to, to relay it back to you, much like your cat needs a translator. It's like, oh, yeah, you already know the answer to this, but you just need to hear it from someone else. And I need to hear it before I can say it to you. So it'll be almost like you will telepathically send me the thing that you need to hear. And the, I know that sounds totally weird, but that's almost like what it is. Yeah. I have a completely different question. Okay. So... I'm in the Venturi at the moment, the uncomfortable bit, mm. and I've got three sound baths to go. Yeah. So I'm about to do number four, then there's five, then there's six, and yeah. presumably by five and six I'm coming out the other end. Mm. In episode two, you made some crazy outlandish <laughs> claims <laughs> of growing wings and flying away yeah. and food tasting better. and. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So my question, the question that came to my mind was just this morning. Mm. All right, so let's say a client, test bunny here, mm. gets to six and mm. some of this started starting to happen because mm. it's starting to happen, right? Mm. Yeah, things yeah. are clearing or melting away. Yeah. yeah. Then what, Matt? Then Do what? you have Matt's meditation course <laughs> where you come weekly or you mm. have the the book that you – the study of how to here's, – mm. here's the question. Yeah. This is an intense process. Yeah. Six is – I didn't expect this. Mm. I didn't expect this. Yeah. I was looking forward to it until this week and I was like, oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's going to be – more of this is going to come up. Yeah. And by six, I'll be in a new place. Yeah. Internally, that is. Mm. But then what? Like, how do you keep this up? All those – States that you spoke about in episode two mm. of of the continued bliss, the mm. bursts of bliss, the mm. seeing, feeling, tasting things more acutely, mm. and all those other benefits. Mm. Doesn't it require continued practice yeah. after six episodes yeah. of? Sound bathing, yeah. does it require 
continued maintenance, I suppose. I'm not yeah. saying I, I need to come back for un- no. sound baths for the rest of my life, but no. what happens after that? How do you maintain that state? Yeah. Okay. What have you got planned? Well, well, he, he, here is what it is, right? And when you reach that state, stage or state, you'll find the next road that you need to take, 100%. It'll appear. It always does. Got it. Yeah. And so you don't need to worry about that yet. Okay. Because that's coming. But here's, here it is in a nutshell. you got a whole, what everyone is, is a whole bunch of habits, Right? And, um, and they're all habits based on likes and dislikes. And what the simple goal is, is you need to let go of your habits. Because what's happening is that your habits are keeping you caged. Yeah. And you might go, yeah, but I like my likes. Yeah, well, that's totally fine. You can like your likes. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's only when you can't function without them. It's a little bit like if um, you say, I like a coffee in the morning. Well, that's wonderful. But if you can't function without coffee in the morning, well, you don't have coffee. Coffee has you. Yeah? And then you'll simply, at, at some stage, want to free yourself from that. Because, well, there's lots of other delicious beverages out there that will give you the same thing. And dandy lion chai. Yeah. <laughs> Bring on the dandy lion chai. Yeah. And if at some stage you get to a point and you're finding that one coffee is not enough, it's not going to go in the right direction. You're going to want two, you're going to want three, it's going to get worse, and then you're going to develop a whole dependency on something that is way out of your control so you're going to have to keep clearing your habits for the rest of your life and that's what it's about everyone has to do that and so what's going to happen or what's happening at the moment is you've got a whole warehouse full of habits and that's what people talk about when they say karma a lot of times when people talk about karma, they get the wrong idea that if I do something good, something good happens to me. If I do something bad, something bad happens to me. That's not karma. Karma is your habits. So if you have the habit of drink, drinking coffee, well, coffee is your karma. And you have to, to be free of it, you need to look at it and allow it to dissolve. And then if you choose to have coffee, wonderful. And you drink it just simply for the joy of drinking coffee. But if there's no coffee, just as wonderful. Another drink, just as delicious. You have that instead. Wonderful. Great. So, but if you drop all your karma, well, you won't stick around here for very long. Because there's nothing left to hold you to the planet. There's, there's nothing left to do. <laughs> so it's not like we're going to dissolve all your karma. All we're going to do is help you dissolve just enough. So it's manageable. And then as life wears on, you will develop more karma because we do that every day. Yeah. Yeah. Because we fall into habits, we might find a new chocolate brand that we do deli- that's delicious, and you're like, oh, "I love this chocolate. Oh, I'm going to love it now for the rest of my life." Well, you can do that, but 100% at the end of your life, you're going to have to give up the chocolate bar too, right? So, what the goal is is you keep your karma manageable. So you burn most of the warehouse of karma to the ground most of your habits you let them all go but you keep just a little purse (laughs) of special karma in your pocket you carry around with you 
And uh, that's why, you know, you might meet someone who is quite enlightened, but they get crazy over these silly things. <laughs> but that's what's keeping them. That's what's keeping them in their body. Yeah. Which um, probably sounds pretty weird, but it's just what it is. So... All we're doing with the sound baths is we're helping to unburden you of all the excess that you've lost control over. And we're giving you back control. Because we're helping you to realize, oh, if I have this, wonderful. And if I don't have it, equally as wonderful. And you will begin to become not only more in control, you'll have greater choice. Because your choice won't be dependent on your likes and dislikes. It will be simply, I'm living in the moment in this joyful state. And, oh, look at this wonderful beverage that has, you know, happened on the table. And you might look at it and go, hmm, no, not today, not right now. This doesn't seem, no, my system isn't going to like this. I won't drink this. And then you might ask for something else. And then that new beverage you will enjoy equally as much as the one you've refused. Yeah? So life becomes very um, spontaneous and more free because your choice is greater. Yeah? It might take a little bit to (laughs) come around to that one. (laughs) Changing, changing pace slightly. Yeah. During the week, sailing came into my mind. The song by Christopher Cross. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was been in my head the entire week but Mm. the reason I whenever lyrics turn up in my head I know it's trying to they're trying to tell me something Mm. it's a beautiful song gorgeous tranquil song so I looked up the lyrics and I thought that they were perfect in describing my state post sound bath Mm. so I I won't yeah go for it go for it I won't read all the lyrics yeah yeah I'll read a few yeah, because read it. I really just don't know if I make much sense post sound bars in the other yeah. interviews because I'm just so tripping that yeah, so blissed <laughs> out yeah, so blissed out yeah. that it's really difficult to articulate what the feeling is. But mm. the song just that's how it feels. It feels like being on a sailboat or being on the water, and it's the the buoyancy of the sea just makes you float. Yeah. It's a mind floating. Yeah. And there is a sense of movement like a rocking that a boat does. Mm. So it's not far down to paradise. At least Mm. it's not for me. Mm. And if the wind is right, you can sail away and find tranquility. So the singing bowls are right. Mm. (laughs) You can, yeah. Canvas can do miracles, just you wait and see, believe me. It's not far, it's not too far to never, never land, no reason to pretend. And if the wind is right, you can say, you can find the joy of innocence again, which is exactly what we talked about, I think, in episode two, possibly episode three, about when I described little kids seeing a butterfly for the first time Mm. and thinking it was magical or Mm. seeing their hand and going, wow, what is that? Mm. Then your response was that sense of innocence Mm -hmm. and wonderment, it's still there, it's underneath. Yeah. And it can reawaken. Mm -hmm. And the song was saying the same thing in a different way that helped me to understand Mm. that when you're sailing 
when you have that feeling of placid movement on the sea, your mind, on your mind sea, Mm. your mind sea, Mm. your mind sailing, Mm. then it engenders a, a joy, not a happiness, but a joy that can bring back that sense of innocence. Yeah. So the lyrics of sailing Mm. put it more eloquently than anything I've said in the last few episodes. Yeah. In Bliss Land. Anyway, just just had to share that because it was much more succinct than my explanations. Yeah. Yeah, it can definitely be difficult to put the feeling into words because... The words are not the feelings. And to words are just a mental approximation. And uh, when you use the words, they, they, they don't really, they don't come anywhere close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember Eckhart Tolle saying that, you know, when you point at the moon... The moon is not your finger. Yeah, meaning that you, you're looking at the wrong thing. Yeah, it's not... Yeah, don't look at the pointing at the thing. You need to experience the thing. It's it's a, it's a feeling. Yeah. Or if you explain to someone, you know, what honey tastes like, the thing will be completely abstract until they actually taste the honey. <laughs> so, yeah, it's got nothing to do with words and thoughts, everything to do with feelings. So I think even I've come across people who are highly intelligent sometimes have a much harder time to tr- grasp it because they're on such a mental level on such a mind level. And then you might find someone who maybe is not the brightest spark. They have an easier time because they're probably more connected to their feelings. And um, so, yeah, I I guess I'm adding that if anyone feels that they're not smart enough that they're not going to understand it because they're not smart enough. This has nothing to do with smarts. <laughs> nothing to do with smarts. Yeah, yeah. You can be... I was never very smart. <laughs> I, I was way more artistic than smart. I was always the lowest in the maths group, the lowest in English, lowest in all the academics, but I was good at art. I could draw a picture. <laughs> so, um, but it also doesn't mean that if you're smart, you won't get it either. Because there's been lots of amazing people who are incredibly intelligent who, you know, have gotten this as well. So, um, but yeah, just to, it's got nothing to do with words. Yeah, I think that's also the thing that I've had conversations with other people and they're like, they're trying to label the experience that you're having. Oh yeah, you're just tripping. Yeah, but tripping is, n- is just a word for the experience. That's like a, that's like a real bastardization of it. And to say that you're just tripping is like an insult. It is an insult. To trip, tripping is is in its literal form a loss of balance yeah yeah it's that moment when you've lost your balance before you fall Mm. that snapshot there where you think this feels good because i'm flying i'm falling but i haven't hit the ground yet but this experience post sound bath is not tripping it's not a loss of control no there is from everything I've experienced so far and what I've just shared, there is a shedding of defences. There's a shedding of maybe it's the karma that you talked about. Mm. I'm not really sure what. Yeah. But it's not a loss of control. It's not 
a trip yeah. up. I'm not getting tripped up. Yeah. No, you're not, you're not getting tripped up. You, you're actually becoming more in control. You're becoming more in your body. More in your body. And I'll just quickly explain that. I won't go off on a tangent. I promise. <laughs> Most of the time, I before spiritual awakening, I was always in my head. Whenever I'd be in the shower, and I'm sure a lot of people experience this, you get in the shower, you don't actually feel the shower. All you're doing is you stand there thinking. And you think, and you think, and you think, and you're trying to solve all your day's issues and all last week's issues, and you just, and then you get out of the shower and you feel weak. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh. <laughs> But if you have a cold shower, it shocks you into your body. And you get out of the shower and you feel invigorated, like you've got better control, you've got your smarts, you've got your wits about you. And you don't think, when you have a cold shower, because you bang in your body. <gasps> yeah, and then you're like, oh, okay, I'm, I feel like a firecracker. I'm ready to go off. Yeah, this is good. It's really good. And then, you know, the heat comes back and and you're fine. Um, but it's more like that, where you're in real control. It's like the, the veil has been lifted. The wet doona has been taken off. You can actually breathe again. <gasps> oh, I can breathe again. I'm not in this cloud of fogginess. It did feel like that during the week, even though I felt really vulnerable once my, my jukes came down. Mm. I felt a, a lot more present. Yeah. I did feel like I was in my body and I was aware that, gosh, I, I feel like I'm walking around naked now. Yeah. But it didn't make me feel defensive. Yeah. Strangely. Mm. The sound bath experience is interesting, even though you're saying it's, you know, you, it will shock you into being in your body. You're mm. describing a shock situation. It doesn't feel like that at all. No, nah, it's not like it's that. It's completely the opposite. Yeah. I've done other modalities. Well, modalities, can I call it that? Yep. Of uh, uh, chiropractic, ne- network chiropractic, which is brilliant. Right. It's not chiropractic. Uh, yep. Chiro- you stop crunching. Yep. It just takes a layer of stress off your nervous system. Yeah. And is that the, through moving the energy up and down your spine? I think so. I'm not. Yep. I don't. You know, I'm lying on the table with my head in the hole, so I don't really yes. know what's going on. But I, it does work on the meridian system. Yeah. And they're only light touches. Very, very light like, touches, and it's absolutely brilliant in removing yeah. stress from your nervous system, which clears all sorts of things. It allows yeah. an environment where any ailments within your body can heal. And originally, mm. I went for my back, and that improved. But it yeah. could be anything that's in your body. But what I always find afterwards is mm. that my head's cleared. Yeah. And then there's something else called. NET, which is neuro neuro emotional technique, mm-hmm. which works, I think, on some sort of tapping or oh yeah, uh, what like do you a, call it on the acupuncture points. No, no, it's more of a kinesiology thing that will take you back to a certain point in your life okay. where an emotion has got stuck, and yeah. you can clear it through an affirmation. Yep, and those both those practices are really really gentle. Mm. I didn't think it could get more gentle, but this process, the sound bathing process, is even mm. milder than that, yeah. yet just as effective. Yeah. And the accumulative effect of now three mm. is profound. Mm. So I'm going to be honest, not that I haven't been honest the entire way, but... <laughs> I'm a little scared to go into this next one because I don't know what other veil is going to come <laughs> off me. <laughs> oh, yeah, what, will yeah. I do? what what are things going to feel like next week? Are they going to be you – know, that's a rhetorical yeah. question, yeah. by the way. I'll let you yeah. know next week. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah. The modus operandi has to change. It's changing. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm a little trepidatious about going into this one. Yeah. But I have committed to the process. Yeah. I am the test bunny. We will... I will keep going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you'll be right. You'll be right. Um, we won't let you go too far. What's too far? Well, too far would be... You just sit around and do nothing. <laughs> no. No. I have bills to pay, Matt. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You you won't uh there there might be some things that will surface and you'll get rid of them and and they'll come and go, right? But too far is you just stop doing everything and you just sit around. And for a period of time, that's a really good thing to do. That's called a sabbatical. Yeah? Well, you just take a year off just to, uh, just, you know, I just got to stop what I'm doing. Oh, my God. I had a dream mm. that that's what I did. About three weeks ago, I dreamt that somebody said, you're on sabbatical. I said, where am I? How did I get here? <laughs> uh, I, I've got a job to get back to. Yeah. Sorry, I can't be here. Yeah. I said, no, it's already done. You're on yeah. sabbatical for a year. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to sabbaticals. Yeah. So, you know, look, that's what I experienced, you know, like. And and it wasn't total sabbatical. It was just, I mean, it was in a lot of ways very lucky that it was in lockdown because it was a forced, uh, okay, well, I yeah. can't go anywhere. And not that I'd really went anywhere anyway. Most of the time I'm in my studio. So, but, you know, there was just less. Pressure. Less pressure. Fewer I'd, obligations. Yeah. I didn't teach as much. That's just what it was. Um, work picked up, you know, once I became more functional again. And um, and it was fine. And um, I've become more, um, become better at manifesting things much much better like things happen quite quickly like figs turning up from your neighbor <laughs> yeah like that kind when of stuff you think of yeah figs. yeah and now i'm thinking of figs yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's a bit early in the season but you never know maybe down the street maybe we'll go for a drive later okay i'm more interested in dandelion tea <laughs> yeah yeah we definitely definitely got that all right fantastic yeah, let's go Sound do it. Bathing. Yeah, let's Alrighty. do it. Let's, let's do, do it that. and then we'll come back okay. for a small okay. chat. Yeah, okay. okay. Okay, Here's a glimpse of the typical setup I use during a sound bath. The participant lies comfortably among seven Tibetan singing bowls. On the left side are bowls linked to the throat and third eye chakras, while on the right are larger bowls associated with the root, sacral and solar plexus chakras. A small bowl near the head corresponds to the crown chakra and the heart chakra bowl is placed between the ankles. Above the participant's head is a gong with tuning forks and a wind chime also used at the beginning and end of the session. For added comfort, a participant lies on three yoga mats and a sleeping bag covered with a heavy blanket to stay warm. Hi, Shell. Hi, Matt. <laughs> so you've just completed your fourth sound bath. Number four. How are you feeling? Different. Different to the other three. Okay. It is significantly different. Yeah. Do you want me to tell you how? Yes, please. I am completely lucid, I am grounded, I feel normal. Whereas yeah. each time previous, yeah. I was in happy land. Yeah. Now I just feel normal. Yeah. Do you want me to tell you why I think that is? Yes, and please. And I could be really wrong about this. No, no, I reckon, well, let's hear. I'll I'll tell you I'm interested in your theory. <laughs> tell me your theory. I want to know your theory. <laughs> okay, you want to hear that first? Okay. I do. All right. Well, from my own experience is that, you know, when, um, when you get unwell, sometimes what you need is a sedative to calm down. And sometimes the sedative will give you the giggles and you'll feel all swimmy because essentially 
the the weight that you're carrying is um, heavy and you need some of that burden lifted. And so you'll go through a period of this is totally ridiculous. Like you see the funny side of it. It's like, um, <laughs> tell you a funny story. <laughs> One time when I was on the swings down at the park, my dad was pushing me up back and forth on the swings. I decided to jump off. I was only a little boy, right? Not like I was, you know, we went down last weekend. <laughs> That'd be a bit weird, right? <laughs> so I was a little boy. He's pushing me on the swings. I decide to jump off. I jump off and I landed in a big pile of dog poo. And it was really wet and it smelled really bad. And there was a couple of girls sitting on a park bench and they were watching the whole thing and they were laughing their head off. (laughs) (laughs) And probably at the time I felt a little conscientious, a little embarrassed. And the weight was a bit heavy to hold, right? So I went home, right? Obviously had to change my clothes. But now it's funny. I can see the humor in it. It's no big deal. That was a really funny thing to happen. I would have loved to have been one of the girls on the park bench to have seen that. That would have been hilarious. So when you're feeling these things releasing, you need a bit of a hand. Yeah. And as that's happening, the easiest thing is humor. And so you get a bit giggly and a bit silly and a bit anaesthetized and you'll be a little bit like, oh, oh. But now that a lot of that is cleared, you're probably like, oh, now I can really see things with clarity because you don't have that burden. Yeah? Anyway, what do you think? I think you're right and there really isn't anything for me to talk about. (laughs) Okay, great. (laughs) Fantastic. High five to that. Yay. Yay. (laughs) Okay, so what else? Could you be more specific? Okay. Um, Had any epiphanies or anything like that or anything that come up that you went, oh, I had a revelation? After the sound bath. Yeah, or during. No, no, it was... There there was nothing profound, I'm sorry to say. I think all the profound stuff happened during the week. Yeah. Yeah, and Mm -hmm. I just feel very clear. I feel freer, Mm. unburdened, all those things that you spoke about. Yeah. Much more in my body. Yeah. In terms of what happened in the room, there was something I noticed. It wasn't an epiphany. It was Mm. just something literally to do with the sound and the vibration. Mm -hmm. So there was a bowl that you ring. There is a bowl that you ring. Uh, Left hand side, left leg. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, left leg Mm. side. Yeah. There is something about the resonance of that particular bowl that fills the room and has a kind of hypnotic effect on me. Yeah. Could you tell me a bit more about that bowl and what it does and maybe the pitch? Just give me some information about that because it was significantly different in mm. its vibration or tonality. Yes. Yeah. Uh, or reach. Yes. Than the other bowls. And I can't figure out why. Why? Yeah. So that one is the really big etched bowl. There's like really intricate etching on it. And that, Inside or outside? Uh, uh, both, actually. Uh-huh. Yeah, the whole thing is like... Um, so just so the listeners can understand what we're talking about, this bowl is... It's a really big bowl. It's probably... Is it the biggest of all the bowls? It's the biggest of all the bowls. Okay. It's about a... What would it be, a 20-inch bowl? It's, it almost seems like it's a, it's two foot. It's a two-foot bowl. Like it's a really big bowl. And it's almost, what, a foot deep. So it'd be the type of thing that you could, you could wash a small child, uh, wash a baby in it. Yeah. They could have a paddle in it. Yeah. So a really big bowl. 
And that bowl has an etching of um, Tara, which is... What's Tara? Tara is the... It's one of the... Now, for all the Buddhists out there, if I get this wrong, my apologies. She's a she's a deity. And I don't remember if it's green or white Tara. I think it's green Tara. And she is the deity of protection. Anyway... That bowl is like the crown jewel out of all my bowls. The The story behind it of how I got the bowl was um, I was doing a sand healing course with Lama Tender and there was um, this bowl in the centre of the room and Lama made a note, this is my bowl, I'm never going to sell it. And, and we were all, you know, really like, oh, look at this bowl and me and a... Another lady and I were standing around the bowl one time playing it and just, you know, like drooling over it. Wow, look at this bowl. It's so bowl amazing. Bowl envy. Yeah, it's yeah, a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you. Yeah. It's bowl envy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so funny. And so anyway, during one of the sessions, we're all sitting around and, and uh, Lama turns to me in front of the group and says, I'm going to sell this bowl to Matt. Matt, this is your bowl. And it I was didn't like, about face. Yeah. And I was like, what? No way. So, anyway, I bought the bowl. It's a and a magnificent bowl. I don't know what I can say about it. It's it's like truly magnificent. It's different to all the other bowls. Well, I could tell. I don't know why I couldn't tell the other three sessions mm. but this time I really felt it there was such a resonance that came mm. off it it was similar in some ways to the gong yeah but in a obviously a different way different position yeah the gong reverberates right through the room and yeah. right across my body but this one was coming at it from a different angle and it took up all of this space yeah in the <clears throat> yeah. Above my body and even into the room. But it also has this effect in the ears. Yeah. Where it just creates this. Mm. Which sounds really annoying because I'm sounding like yeah. a mosquito right now at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not annoying at all. It's. It is kind of trance like. Yeah. But not in a. Not in a way that makes me feel drugged in any way. No. It's just, I don't know. I don't know how it does it. I just noticed yeah. it was it was doing something that the other ones that were not, and even the gong yeah. did not have that same impact. Yeah, yeah. It has this, um, like, a commanding kind of presence about it. Yeah. Now, is it because of the way it's made or... Is it a non-commercial one that it's handmade? There's, it's one of a kind. Yeah, it'd be all of that handmade, one of a kind. You, it'd be, yeah. So it's not out of a factory in China. Hundred percent not. <laughs> <laughs> this would have been made by a monk. Who, really? Yeah, yeah. That every hammer blow that went to make it would have been a mantra. That, that's Are how they make serious? it. Are you serious? Yes. So there would have been. They're praying as they make a ball. Yep. Yeah, so thousands, hundreds of thousands of prayers. prayers. And what is it made from? What type of metal? So there's seven different metals. Seven different metals. Um, I can't tell you what the all the metals are off the top of my head, but there Main would be couple? there would be gold, silver, you know, brass, um, probably tin, copper. But basically, there's seven metals that relate to um, the planets and. I can't remember what they are off the top of my head, but yeah. So you can always tell the quality of a good singing bowl is that a a really good bowl will be made with seven medals. Okay. Yeah. And more your gift shop bowls, two medals. Yeah. So I've got a couple of gift shop bowls and I've got some other, you know, like in between gift shop and, you know, like, you might call a medicinal bowl. And um, 
they have a different quality. They're not they're nothing like the seven metal bowls. Yeah. So all the the seven bowls you have, which yep. are your your main gig sort of thing, yeah, main, yeah. In, main instruments. <laughs> yeah, main instruments. Yeah. Yeah, they're all made from seven, seven metals, metals. But this special bowl. Yeah. That's kind of standalone. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was um when when I got that one, that was the only really big bowl I had. And um and so I had a number of I had a set well I I had three sets. And the original set that I had was like similar to the big set that I have, but just a smaller version. We use those today, right? Uh, no, those ones I actually got rid of. <laughs> there were different yeah. bowls in there today um, compared with last week? No, they're all the same bowls. But uh-huh. yeah, they're I did multiplying, have... by the way. I counted them. There's 22. <laughs> there were 22 today and was yes. 21. Yeah, they're having babies yeah, in there. Yeah, they're having babies, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I have... A couple of gift shop bowls, and they do sound really pretty, and I do like to use them. And they're simply just for um, the Sonics. You know, they just sound pretty, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with just when you're in a blissful state and you just want to hear some prettiness. Yeah, why not? It's totally fine. Um, As time goes by, you never know. I might sell them, get better bowls. We'll see. Then I've got some Indian bowls, and they're a two metal bowl. They are they're a medicinal bowl as well, but those the quality of those is um, nothing nothing compared to the seven metal bowls, mm. and um, and they're nice. They do the job. Um, my experience from them is that. If you just have a sound bath with those Indian bowls, you get more of a psychedelic kind of buzz from them. Like things seem... Are you serious? So different types of metals, different types of bowls, different yeah. ways of making them will have produce a different response yeah. on the client. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So the... Um, the Tibetan bowls is like just compassion and love. It's like just are those the ones yeah. in there? Yeah, compassion and love. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, compassion and love. Yeah, so it's like you know being wrapped in you know like silk sheets around a nice doona and just warmth. Well, it has been the big group hug. I've yeah. described what happens with those seven, that, yeah. the main ones. Yeah. When they're all singing at once, it is the sonic group hug. Yeah. Mm. I guess the Indian bowls are probably more like... Um, uh, you see, you know, like uh, they might be... You might have a bit more of a giggly effect, like uh, everything is so funny. You know, like silliness and... Um, playful. Playful. There you go. Playful. Um, so, but when I originally got the Indian bowls and I didn't have Tibetan bowls at that stage, I thought they were amazing. <laughs> As you do, you know. You upgraded. I upgraded. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went from gift shop bowls and I thought they were pretty good until I was like, Oh, I encountered the Indian bowls and went, wow, okay, that's a step up. I've got to get those. And then I encountered the Tibetan bowls and I was like, okay, yeah, everything else is all right. You're sounding like a tech head with bowls. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I had had a bit of gear acquisition syndrome. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I've come into 22 today. Yeah, yeah. Who knows what? Is going to happen next week. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Going to be more? <laughs> yeah. Unless, um, well, I did hear a story once of a friend who went down Brunswick Street with a banjo in his car and he left the door open. And when he came back, there was another five banjos in his car. Oh, I've heard this, this <laughs> joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but he, I loved a banjo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only person who will say that. Hey, I have two banjos. <laughs> they're beautiful things. Yeah, they're both given to me. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Did you have your back, back yeah. door open? Yeah. <laughs> 
beautiful instrument. Yeah, they're fantastic. Don't, fantastic. Don't. The banjo yeah. is just like the happiest instrument on the planet. It is. You it's can't a, be sad listening it's to the banjo. Cheerful. Yeah. It's so much more cheerful than a guitar. Yeah. Beautiful yeah. sounding thing. You just yeah. to get into the mood of it. Yeah, you you just won't play them at a funeral. Mm. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. Unless you're that type of person, you mm. want to go out with a bit of a jig, yeah? Well, it is a celebration of life. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Maybe, hey, maybe that's what I'll do. When I leave this planet, I'll probably, yeah, get someone to hire a banjo play for me. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We're so <laughs> off topic now. <laughs> I think you're having an effect from the yeah, sound bath. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's... I think it's it's projected onto it's me. It's definitely projected more on you. I feel like, I'm <laughs> feeling like I'm the grounded one this time and you're the giggly one. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting how it's reversed. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So anything else? Any any other, you know, you're looking forward to anything now or what do you think this week's going to be like? I have no idea what to expect. Hmm. So this is for, yeah. I think I'm coming out the other side of this, Venturi. Yeah, I think uh, so. It'll be interesting to see five, six, uh, actually even more interested in, say, six months yeah. after this process is finished, mm. what's changed, if anything's mm. changed, yeah. if my MO, how I walk through this life, mm. how I present every day is different to how it was. Mm. Mm. But I won't know that till that time comes. But yeah. I have a question for you. Yeah. And being an experiment for you, mm. what are you hoping to see in this process? Are, is there anything that you're hoping to see change? Mm. Yeah. Or maybe not. Yeah, well, no, no. Yeah. Just in okay. general, yeah. Well, this is this is what I would or anticipating perhaps. Yeah, yeah. This is what I anticipate. Once you get a taste, there's no going back. Taste of what it's like to feel awake, as opposed to blissful all of the time, or is it one and the same thing? It's one and the same thing. Look, blissful moments come and go. Yeah, because. Can I just stop yeah, you there and it. ask you, what does awake look and feel like? I feel like I'm awake yeah. now, yeah, but I don't know if that's what. Yeah, well, yeah, you've got it. Yeah, if you feel settled, settled. Okay, yeah. so to feel awake feels settled. Settled. How else would you describe it? Um, if you had to. Or, you know, if you felt like it, you could sit there for an extraordinarily long time and be still very settled and not feel that, oh, I need to go or I'm running late or I'm going to miss out. It's like, hmm, okay, this is good. I can I can sit here and do this. And it's no big deal. Right. Sorry, I've got more questions now. Yeah. How is that different from feeling peace? Well, probably, probably not too different, um, but peace I would probably describe as even in the worst of times that in the background there's this unwavering, it will work out, it'll work out. Even when things are going like diabolically wrong for people around you or maybe even for yourself, you'll go, okay, yeah, this is making me feel a bit itchy. Like, ooh, like, I really want to do these things because I can see the benefit for others. And then there will be a part of you who go, don't worry, they'll be right. Whether you're here or not, things are going to work out. Mm -hmm. So... That's peace. That's peace. Whereas settled is just feeling like you don't have to rush and you don't have to get to the next thing and you can just be in that state in that one place (sighs) breathe yeah breathe that unhurriedness in your body Mm. hmm 
I'm feeling that now. Yeah. Yeah, definitely feel that now. Yeah. I hope that lasts. I hope oh, that one. Well, what, what will happen is that you will bob up and down a, bit, a little bit like a boy in the ocean. And sometimes you'll go into deeper states of settledness. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and then you good. yeah, you'll go into deeper states of bliss and you'll and it will just bubble up. And then, you know, life will get a bit busy and you'll get into a bit of mischief and then you'll be less settled. And then you'll have a bit of a giggle and then you'll probably sit down. <laughs> have a cup of tea and yeah, start to become more settled again. Um once you're really settled Getting into a bit of mischief is no big deal. You know, like it's a bit of, it's a bit like why you would play a board game. You know, you play a board game just for the thrill of playing a board game. It's a bit of fun. Yeah. Um, It's also probably like if you were a billionaire and you went to the casino and you lost, I don't know, like a lot of money. You'd be like, ah, yeah, okay, I lost a lot of money. But it's not like it's really hurting me. I'm a billionaire. And so you do it just for a buzz. Just for a bit of mischief. Yeah, to keep things kind of fun. Yeah, so when you're really, really settled, naturally a little bit of humour and fun and excitement will be you know, there and it'll catch your eye and you'll go, yeah, let's go and do this because it'll be a bit of fun. Yeah, and then you'll go off and have a bit of fun. You might even get into a whole lot of mischief and then you'll have a bit of a laugh and it'll be no big deal. Yeah. But if you haven't, if you're not there, like if you're not a billionaire and you go to the casino and you lose, I don't know, let's say a thousand dollars, you'll be hurting Because you'll be like, oh, I'm such an idiot. I could have used that $1,000 to feed myself this week. And now I can't. And um, and that will will get pretty uncomfortable, right? So it's only when you're not experiencing that settled feeling where life seems really rough. Yeah. So, yeah. Got it. Thank you. No worries. Fantastic. Any more questions for me? No, I think I think you're good. Okay. Yeah, your eyes look really clear. Great, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> I just lay there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. Mm. Really, really good. I feel very awake. Yep. Present. It's yeah. a really nice feeling to yeah. not be. Distracted by my own thoughts or my to-do list. Yeah. 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 It's almost like it's so normal, it's breathtaking. That's it. Yeah. In a nutshell. Breathing, it's probably not visible from the camera, but yeah. my breathing is regular and deep. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. You can mm, breathe so easily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's effortless. 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 Yeah. Oh, that just reminds me. There was yeah. a word that came up during the week. I know I had a crap week emotionally yeah. in a lot of ways, but yeah. there were moments where I talked about sailing and that feeling of sailing. Mm. The word that encapsulates all of that is ease. Yeah. Ease. Yep. It's such a wonderful feeling that to be at ease and to do everything with ease for life, to be easy but Mm. not in that throwaway line kind of way. Mm. Yeah. I don't know a better way to express it, but yeah. Yeah. Ease. Ease. Yeah. That is one thing that I've noticed that when you hear a word now in this state, they really resonate. Mm -hmm. And so you think, Ease, 
And you go, oh, yeah, it actually me f- makes me feel like that when I say the word. Mm-hmm, mm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's a much more profound meaning to ease now that i felt it. Yeah. Yeah, before it was just a label for something that you're not sure if you're feeling. Easy, easy is almost trivialises the experience. The mm. word easy yeah. dumbs it right down. It, it, it's the difference between talking about tin and gold if you yeah. just say easy. But to experience true ease, which is what I'm feeling at the moment yeah. in all aspects in my body, in my mind, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's sailing. Yeah. On yeah. a calm water. Yeah. With just enough breeze. Yeah. I yeah. recommend it. Yes. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, I think um, one, one final thought, at least for me, is that what I see in a lot of people is they're always looking for the next experience. But it's almost like what is the next thing... Um, next label that I can learn so I can have a little bit more in my life. But labeling things is a really, really shallow compared to experiencing it. So when people say, oh, I understand, um, say the word bliss, well, if you're not experiencing bliss, Bliss is like the word is is like a really cheap comparison to the experience. It's hollow. It's hollow. Yeah. So, yeah, if someone was saying, oh, yeah, they just blissed out. Oh, it's nothing. Yeah, I would probably say you, you're not experiencing it. And so you'd need to experience it to really understand what it is. Anyway, there we go. There we go. Number four done. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for the time. Oh, my pleasure. So, number yeah. five. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, number five. Here That'll be come. fascinating. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Cheryl. Thank you for joining us today. This has been a fascinating exploration of sound buds. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and leave a comment. Join us again next week as Shell continues her journey with her fifth of six consecutive sound baths. And until next time, stay well and keep exploring new experiences.